My name is Neil Petwari. This is EC5510. This video segment is on Bernoulli and binomial random processes and how we get the one from the other. So let's start talking about what a Bernoulli random process is. Okay, the Bernoulli says that I have this random variable, let's call it x sub i, and it's either going to take the value of 1 or the value of 0. And it's going to do this at every integer time sample. So for example, time 1, time 2, time 3, 4, 5, and 6. And every time, I'm going to run an experiment that takes one of two values. Let's say a success or a failure. And at time 1, I have a success. Time 2, I have a failure. Time 3, failure. Uh, maybe two successes and another failure. And this could go on because it's a random process, I'm saying it goes on for all time. Well, what happens when I take that variable x sub i and I run it through a summer, a cumulative summer, that sums from i equals 1 to n? Well, what that sum does is it counts the number of successes between time 1 and n. And what do we call the number of successes in a certain number n trials. Well, what we've been calling it is a binomial random variable. And because we're evaluating how this random variable evolves over time through this process, it's actually now a random process. So let's look at what that random variable looks like. So we've still got time n, and time n from 1 to 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and of course beyond that. Um, what happens at time 1? So at time 1, we're summing from 1 to 1 of x sub i. So we've got x sub 1. x sub 1 was a 1, so my sum is going to be equal to 1. Okay, now at time 2, at time 2, I'm summing from i equals 1 to 2. I sum the first two x's, and these values are 1 and a 0, so I still have 1. Now at time 3, I'm summing from 1 to 3. I've got a 1 and two zeros, so I'm still going to have a 1. It isn't until time 4 when I actually have two 1's to sum together, so that's going to take this value up to 2. And time 5, it's going to take the value up to 3. And times 6, it's still going to remain at 3. You can see how it's a cumulative sum of the Bernoulli random process. So what is the probability that my y sub n is equal to some number, um, say k, k sub n? Well, it's the number of successes in the first n trials. So what I do is I write in the binomial uh, PMF, just like we've learned it before. We take n, choose the number of successes. We choose which of those times were successes. We write p for the probability of having a success, and we know that we had kn of that, those. And we know that we had uh, n minus kn failures, and each failure had a probability 1 minus p. So this is the same thing that we had before. And this is for um, for any particular n, but for k equals 0 up to n, because that's the possible number of successes after n trials. And at any time n, I can ask about that probability mass. OK, what, what's special about this sum? We actually are going to see this again and again. In this particular sum, we're sending in a Bernoulli random process into the sum and getting a binomial random process out. But we could put another random process in, some other discrete time random process in, and we'd get a discrete time output. Well, what we're going to be particularly interested in are these things called discrete time uh, sum processes, discrete time counting processes, actually. and a counting process is going to be defined as follows. Uh, 
so we're going to say a random process uh, y sub n is a discrete time counting process if it has these three properties. So the first property is that x sub n, sorry, y sub n is going to be equal to zero for all n that are zero or less. So less than or equal to zero. So I can plug in negative one, I can plug in zero, but since I don't start counting until uh, this n is one or greater, I'm just going to be adding lots of zeros together. So I'm going to say that specifically as a property. The other property is that y sub n is an integer value. So I'm going to write integer value by saying it's a set, it's in the set of integers for all n. The third property is that it's non-decreasing. So yn is either constant or increasing. And we say that is non-decreasing. And this is for all n again. You can see that in this particular case that y sub n either stays constant or it increases. Well, that's because the Bernoulli random process is 0 or 1. But in general, what we're saying about a discrete time counting process is that we can plug in something in here that is just has positive, takes positive values, and then y sub n will be non-decreasing. Okay, that's all I really have to say about the Bernoulli random process and the binomial random process, and how the binomial random process is a discrete time counting process. We're going to talk next, in the next video, about a continuous time counting process that is called the Poisson random process. And um, it's going to have three very similar properties, but we're going to be looking at a continuous time random variable rather than a discrete time random variable.